Hello, listeners. Welcome to the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon podcast. Uh, today, we have a special guest from Singapore. Uh, so if you watch my earlier episodes, I had one episode uh, with Crystal Gore, all right? so the founder of Grow PR, and she recommended uh, the gentleman here with me today. And uh, we actually met up in Singapore. So I remember a couple of weeks ago, I was in Singapore, and uh, we, because we connected on LinkedIn, I actually caught up with uh, some Kopi Peng with him uh, at uh, Bugis Junction, if I remember. And and uh, having shared that, when, when I first met him, I had the impression that I got was he is a very driven person. Uh, he has a lot of goals and uh, he really wants to impact uh, the region, right? So Southeast Asia and beyond. And uh, when I spoke to him, he has speaking engagements across uh, Malaysia, Philippines and many other countries. So we have Raymond Lim with us. So let me do a quick introduction. All right, so he is a keynote speaker, uh, sales coach, business consultant, and also he has over 20 years experience, right, uh, in coaching and also leading teams. Uh, so he has actually a financial advisory. He's been, uh, he's earned six to seven digits income, uh, and also he has mentored financial advisors across Singapore, Malaysia, China, Philippines, Hong Kong and many other countries as well. And of course, uh, you know, he has been featured in many media like CNA, Yahoo Finance, and many others. And most importantly, uh, most we have actually met in person. So not many of my podcast guests I've actually had coffee with before I actually got them on the pod. So Raymond, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi, Bob, and uh, viewers and listeners on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Raymond, for, for taking the time. Uh, so my first question to you, to all my guests, right? i like to ask this first question because it's called the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon podcast. What is your favorite Kung Fu movie? My favorite Kung Fu movie is Ip Man. Ip Man. Yeah, in short, they call it the IP Man. So some of them, I think it's called Ip Man. Yeah, <laughs> so I actually enjoy the series and especially the actor yeah, um, uh, playing the movie uh, with a very strong character. Yes, yes. Uh, I love uh, Donnie Yen also. Yeah, uh, Donnie Yen. So, but, so, yeah. so maybe my question is like, when, when you watch in Singapore, right, I imagine it's in Mandarin, right? Yes, correct. It's in Mandarin. Uh, I enjoy. I also understand Cantonese. I watch it a couple of times in the Cantonese version. Also. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. This is so rare. I, I really find uh, Singaporean uh, that understand Cantonese. They're, they're so different. Uh, how to watch it in <laughs> Mandarin? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. I so understand like, Cantonese. Like, I can speak Mandarin. Like, yeah. Yakota Sapko become uh, we are Oh my, it's a very different <laughs> flavor already. But but yeah, thank you for for sharing. Uh, that that is a great movie because it is always about defending the weak. Uh, so like defending you know the martial arts industry, the Chinese in Hong. Uh, he's he's defending his um his martial arts studio in Hong Kong and then like defending the Chinese in, in the US. And the story goes on, like, even though it's a bit fictional now, based on a real a real person, but now it's a bit fictional, go US, like, go wherever. Like. But it is a great story of, you know, someone uh, defending uh, the underdog, defending the, the needed uh, and uh, fighting because there, there is a need as well. Uh, so yeah, thank, thank you for, for sharing about that, Raymond. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So maybe from from uh, Ip Man's story, right? Uh. So so before I interview you, of course, I have to do a lot of research and read up about your story on on these uh various media outlets. So maybe can you share with us? Uh, so I've not seen a, a a lot of videos of you out there. Maybe you can share with us. You know how you would tell your own story. Uh. You know that is your know, your transformational story from uh from the past until now today. I think as uh, what I mentioned that I'm driven. Uh, in fact, I'm a person, uh, my colleagues or my staff will say that I'm a person of character. Uh, usually I do things very unusual from the memory. Uh, in fact, uh, from young, I've been very driven. Even from school days till now, uh, I've been always wanting to lead and always wanting to do well. But I think many of you all here may not know that 23 years ago, I was a compulsive gambler. So from the 18... Uh, years old of age to 23, uh, I probably into compulsive gambling. So I actually, in a driven form, um, I'm very addicted to gambling, but the wrong actions carry out the wrong outcome. So in fact, uh, some of you may or may not know, I can gamble in Genting Casino for three days with one hour of sleep. So, so that is how active my mind can, but I think if, when I put it into a wrong action, and wrong outcome comes out. So I think ever since I understand that uh, myself better, 
be able to have clarity and certainty on how I can put my least strength into good use. Then I became a fantastic salesperson and a fantastic leader in all my businesses and all my leadership journey. Thank you, Shepherd, for sharing with me. So, what year were you in Genting? Um, I in Genting when I was eighteen, all the way to around twenty three. So 20, I was born in nineteen seventy seven. That would be ninety five, ninety four, okay, ninety five okay. starting. Yeah. So when I'm of age to gamble, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for sharing. Well, Genting is also like Raymond is based in Singapore, so not easy to go to Genting, need to take bus and, and everything. Uh, and uh, fun fact, I used to that's the reason why I asked, right? Is because I used to work in Genting, I used to be the cashier in the casino. So, if uh, if the right decade, uh, we might have uh, I might have uh, served you, uh, uh but I, I work as a cashier in the casino. I remember my counter was like one million ringgit, ringgit counter, but I, uh, I, I, so like you said, you, you didn't sleep for, for three days, right? I can imagine, no, because I was in the casino, I see these compulsive gamblers, uh, and they sleep at a slot machine. No? Were, you, were you one of them, like those that sleep at a slot machine or sleep at a theme park or something like that? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I was some of the crazy ones that sleep. So even if I have a room that I book for three nights, I seldom use the room other than showering. Yeah, so how, how you can imagine like how my how my mind was that active and consumed into gambling, which is the wrong outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, gambling is is not a lazy person can do. It's uh, like you said, driven. Uh, and and yeah, it can can go on along. Like you can imagine the lights and the music at the casino. I can imagine already because I used to work there. Uh, so. So yeah, 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 it's uh it's it's very interesting. So like tell tell us what happened, like what happened after your compulsive gambling episode. Uh and you said you were in sales and how do you transition to being a, a leader today? I think a bit of background is uh I have a delinquent grandfather who did not spend a lot of time with my dad. So I think being young, uh, my dad was left alone to care for himself uh, under the care of my grandma. And also uh, my uncles, who is actually my, my father's brother. So I think over the years, uh, my, my parents or my dad do not have a fatherly character. So in turn, my dad also have some delinquent parenting arrangement. Uh, my dad is actually an alcoholic. So my dad, once he drinks, he becomes a different person. So it seems to me, once I gamble, I become a different person. So I think after this uh, clarity that was given to me, uh, at an early age, I'm very thankful. I began to understand why my dad behaved this way. I began to understand why I behaved this way. So I think through positive mentoring and also opportunity given to me, I went into insurance sales. So I went into insurance sales at the age of 22, turning 23. And I did very well in the first two years with the desire to pay off my debts. So I chopped out of 186,000 of credit card debts and credit line debts at the age of 23 holding a, a sales engineer job at the power time after the national service. But because of this, uh, I chalked up a lot of debts. I uh, end up, uh, I was not able to pay. So very thankful that I was given the opportunity to, to rearrange uh, my life again. I went into insurance. Uh, I'm glad also that the power time insurance industry was not that stringent. I still managed to be able to join with debts at the point of early time in early 2000. So I think the short span of 14 months, I cleared 186,000 of debts. Then ever since then, I become a manager two years later. And to date, I'm leading one of the biggest team in Prudential Singapore. So I'm very thankful that uh, this uh, life journey given me much opportunity. And over the last uh, eight to nine years, I set up uh, four to five successful business. So one of them is the RL Consultancy, which I'm doing speeches, I'm doing training, I'm doing coaching for sales individuals and uh, in people in the insurance industry, in the banks, and those corporate companies, NNCs. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you for sharing that story. I, I cannot imagine being hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars in debt. And then uh, it's, it's, it's your, I, can, I like that you said that you work off the debt uh, in, in, uh, in the few months, right? Um, and, 14 months, uh, and about one and a half years. Eight months. Yeah. In a, 14 one months, one four. Fourteen months. months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So very good to hear that. Uh, not a lot of people will not come out of that, uh, at all. And uh, yeah, you you mentioned also positive mentoring. So was it, uh, how how did it help you then? I think uh my two mentors uh when I first joined the business helped me to build my character, than the results uh. So I give you an example. Most of us want to make money, 
but we didn't focus on becoming a better person. So I think two of my mentors sit me down and ask me, Raymond, is this the way you want to live your life? Is this action the way you want to carry out? So I start to understand. So I become a person that understand that me as an individual is a very nice person. But when I go into gambling as an action, I become a very different person. So as long as I don't carry out the wrong action, I can become a right being, which I think just need to put it into good use. In fact, many of the people who do not know gamblers, if you help gamblers pay off their debts, they will chop up new debts. Gamblers can only overcome themselves if they pay off their own debts. So I've seen so many people I've talked to and counseled in my journey of work and also in all my daily basis that I do. Those people who have been paid off debts by others will chop up new debts again. But if they pay off all their own debts, that's where they have a higher chance to quit or overcome compulsive gambling. Yeah. Wow, that is uh, so, uh, so, so good advice there. Uh, so paying off your own debts, uh, taking responsibility also. And I imagine that um, you... you you joined the industry, insurance industry and you're into sales, all right? So was the paying off debt your main motivation? Initially, it was. Initially, it was. So I'm very thankful that uh, I'm very close to my poly mates, my second school mate and my ex colleague. i uh, very glad that a huge percentage of them believe in me. So many of them, I told them about the truth, uh, but they still decided to choose, although there's a few who don't trust in me after that. But they mentioned that they like me as an individual and then very thankful that they give me a good start in the career. So I did pretty well uh, by having uh, close knitted friends and contacts being my clients. And I, for the first two years, I've been doing roadshow in Singapore. So literally, I'm in Orchard Road uh, and also in Popayo where I stay at the bus station and bus interchange. For two years, I had 800 over clients. Literally every single day, other than me overseas, I'm always at Popayo or at Orchard doing roadshow or doing survey, street surveys. So that's how I succeeded by having 800 clients in the first two years. Oh, that is quite impressive. Maybe like, I don't see, today we don't do roadshows anymore so much for, uh, for, for the industry. And uh, maybe can you share with us some, what, what was the experiences you had I, every single day in Topayo and every single day at Orchard doing roadshow? Must be, must be a very uh, difficult uh, experience. I think for people who want to do well in sales, you have to first understand how you take rejection as a topic. Okay, as long as you understand rejection as a topic in, in clarity and in depth, you will literally do very well. Example, most people don't reject you. They reject what you do. Most people don't reject you as a person, but they reject what you do. So example, when people give me an objection on the street, on a road show, they are not rejecting Raymond because not, most of them, especially Cody, they do not know Raymond, right? But they reject the role that I carry. So in this case, it will be insurance. In this case, it will be a salesperson. Be it, let's say I'm not in insurance, I'll be maybe doing property or credit card, right? So most people do not like salesperson. But if you can be an interesting person before you become a salesperson, then you win. Example, how do I, uh, a lot of my colleagues and also peers, and how can I able to stop people to talk to me? Because from maybe about 200 meter away or 100 meter away, I'll start to smile at the people. I'll look very lively. I'll look very natural. So when they come to me, I, I didn't post them an insurance question first. I post them questions like a conversation. So how are you? I guess you'll be avoiding me later on, right? So in fact, I'm not very scary. So I start conversation like this. Okay. So sometimes when they are queuing for, for, for their bus, I talk to them at the start. At the start. It seems like you're going to take two minutes to queue up. Then why don't you talk to me? So many at times, many of them choose to talk to me eventually. And especially at Topayo and Orchard where they work, right? Or they go home. They see me multiple times. So I remember this very interesting story. This black top lady. It was at Topayo bus interchange at this black top store. So at this cashier uh, that I stand there for almost about three months, uh, the cashier lady, which is the auntie, uh, came out after three months. He spoke to me in Hokkien. Uh. He said, Auntie, uh, I don't know what I'm to see me. Uh. I don't know what you do. Uh. Okay, for mm. me, say, uh, young boy, okay, I don't know what you do. But I want to do something with what you do. So then he asked me what I do. Then I told him, say, I buy, I, I sell insurance. Then he said, very good. Uh. Auntie, gang hao, yao tui siu, uh. yao nai dian qian, uh, to so in the end, uh, yeah, very interesting, right? 
She said literally that she wants to help me. Then I asked her why. Then she said that you are the only person uh, I see uh, in roadshow or even in canvassing, uh, street canvassing. You are the person who can come for three months straight and never give up. And you can talk to the people so lively, so energetic. He said, because of this, I know that when I buy from you, you will service me. Interesting, right? Although it was not a very expensive policy, uh, this auntie only put about $90 a month. To date, this auntie is still my client. In fact, her policy got to mature a couple of years. Yeah, 40 plus years old auntie at that time, you know, I'm a 20 plus, and now she's in the 60s. So she's actually receiving this 20 or 25 years retirement saving plan. Amazing, right? Wow, that is a, a great story and uh, I can I can imagine that because uh, I was uh, a while in sales also. Uh, I used to do cold calls <laughs> to, to companies and I, look, I, I think my observation from you is the mindset that I really like. Uh, you said that they are not rejecting Raymond. They are rejecting the salesperson or rejecting insurance property, whatever it is. I think quite similar to what you said just now. Uh, you said, hey, you know, I am a good person. But when I have the behavior of gambling, then I become a different person. So it's not like, I think the major change here is that, okay, you're not taking it out on yourself. It's the, it's the action or the object, which is different than, than yourself or your person. Am I, am I right? Yeah. So as a salesperson, uh, if you believe in what you sell, in this case, insurance, in other case, can be property, can be car. Okay. I feel that as a salesperson, the only way for you to understand rejection is people are not rejecting you. People are probably rejecting the role that you do. So as long as you can have touch-based system and can be happy about like carrying a high series and stuff, people will enjoy talking to you. So I always tell my salespeople that I meet. Okay, if you cannot make a friend, you will very rarely make a sales. I repeat, you cannot make a friend, you very rarely will make a sales. So most people buy because they feel that you can relate or be a friend first. They don't buy because you are selling something. So I think for a sales to happen, they have to like you first as an individual. So that is important. Yeah. So Yeah, okay, that's a that's a, a good point. Right. So yeah, so today you are a speaker and one of the topics you share is uh, high performance teams and also uh, how to build a million dollar agency. So I think being a good salesperson is yes, you, are, you can talk a and do everything. But then when you build your own team is you scale, right? So how do you, let's say just now you shared a lot of good tips and a lot of experiences with me. How do you make sure you clone yourself or, or duplicate yourself? Or maybe how do I say impart your knowledge to, to your, your team? So being a sales individual, uh, you just need to be very driven. But one thing to become a top leader, you have to be very structured and systematic. By default, I'm not a structured and systematic person. So over the years, understanding leadership, I began to understand to hire people and work with people that is totally different from me. So I give an example, one of my top partners in my team and also some of my staff are very reverse on me. They don't like to talk, but they can become keyboard warriors. They can write documents very well. They can back documents very well. So actually some of my partners itself, they take charge of finance, accounting. I'm not good at that. So I trust them, they will be able to manage the money. So my role is to do well in sales, train people. So when I hire staff, I use some profiling understanding to hire people that is very reverse on me. Okay, so I give example, I hire people who are good listeners. I hire people who are very good in documentation. Very good in this case now, some of my social media are managed by Bob and also by some of my staff. So I, I work with people who are naturally systematic and organized themselves. Yeah, so my role is that to do well. So example, if I use, I use a nutshell, okay, if I want to win in a soccer game, I either be the striker or be the manager. I don't need to be every player. I don't need to be 11 player inside the team. So in the event, if I'm a striker, I must make sure that who is my defender, who is my midfielder, who is my goalkeeper. That's important because my role as a striker is to score. So in this case, now I'm a manager. So I need to know who is going to be my striker, my midfielder, my defender, my, my goalkeeper. So that is how I play. I put people management. I put people on the field. So that is about leadership. Oh, thank you for sharing that. I love the analogy because uh, I'm a big, big football fan. Uh, and uh, I understand the analogy. I cannot be everyone. And everyone yeah, has you that. can't be a... 
Yeah. Yeah. So 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 good analogy that the the sales or maybe the bis business development is is a bit like the striker to get in the sales or to close the deal. And uh, I I think remember I, I remember you told me you are a closer when we, when we were at Bugis Junction. You are a closer. So may, maybe I I like to ask a question on the striker part, right? So uh, when it comes to the sales people, right? Do do you find people who already have the same character as you? Or do you coach them or do you start from scratch? What do you do? For sales, I will encourage myself to find people similar like me. But for staff and also strong business partner may not be. Because if everybody has the same strength, we cannot cover our weaknesses. So I pray that at least some percentage of my salesperson are like me, some are not. Mm. Okay, because example, if today now I go for a birthday party, I go for an annual D&D. &D, most of the top salesperson do not like to do duties. They like to come, they like to come on the dot, they after that go off. But who's going to do up all the necessary dirty work, setting up all the, the thing? These are all done by people who don't like to talk, don't like to be at the front. Correct? Example, if today now I play, I play soccer, I play defender, I think I will quit. I play goalkeeper, I'll quit. Yesterday, I play defender, I quit tomorrow. I, I see myself, uh, I, I like to score goal and you understand what I'm coming from. Uh, yeah. So, so this is uh, because I will not enjoy a role of a goalkeeper. I will neither enjoy a role of a defender. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can relate because uh, I'm, I, I, I different parts of my life, but at one point, I really love defending. I love just frustrating people and just people cannot just, just uh, clean shit. Uh, I love the feeling. Uh, so so that is uh that is also very very important. So yeah, like good point on that. Like you hired uh different people for the, on their different strengths as well, and uh, maybe uh after your uh while while growing as a as the becoming a leader in the insurance industry. So how do you decide to actually start off uh, right now our RL consultancy, uh and now now you are doing training and also speaking. So maybe tell us more about that. Um, the desire to set up our consultancy was because my team in uh, the sales team had gone to more than 100 people. So I'm very thankful that I got very strong uh, managers and directors running uh, the organization with me. So in fact, uh, I use training and coaching internally and externally to improve my skill and also improve my training structure. So initially, the consulting work was done for my insurance client as a free arrangement. Example, those of my clients who are in sales or run businesses, they buy insurance, I earn commission, right? So what I do, I train them and I train their salesperson for free. Then after a while, I do pretty well in that role. I can coach telemarketers very well. I can coach people who have uh, uh, problem setting appointments. I can even coach people who have problem closing sales in other industries. Example, property industry, even in uh, pharmaceutical, in car, in uh, in resale car, and in cosmetic. I start to train them because they are my clients, no? they are my insurance clients. Then until part I do so well, then some of my clients ask me, Raymond, why you never thought of doing something that you can charge on this area? And I start to pivot. No? So that was seven years ago. I started to set up my RLC consultancy arrangement. I started to run uh, this training, coaching arrangement. Then currently now I'm doing at the highest form, which is only doing platform speaking and also some executive coaching. I also coach people on how to speak. I coach people how to lead also. Yeah, so so I move on from training to coaching and also to speaking. Yeah, in one area of my consulting work also, I provide a sales strategy for company to increase their revenue and also to hire the right person. As I mentioned, I'm quite good in uh, psychometric too. I began to understand how people, when they react to certain psychometric answers, and especially in terms of character, uh, they, they are actually straight towards what type of uh, arrangement. So I give an example, maybe give uh, Bob and also the listener some, some example today. Now, I, I ask you one question. What motivates you in life? Okay, so if the person answer, I feel that I'm motivated by, or I think I'm motivated by, okay? The feel and the thing, very different. The feel one is more from the heart. The thing one is more from the head. So you see about linguistic understanding, you get to understand people, whether their mastery is from the head or mastery from the heart. So mastering from the heart is about storytelling. Mastering from the head is about logic, uh, figures and numbers. So this itself is actually done in my workshop, my training, it's I give you clarity. So 
So in the business setting, I gave him a clarity about hiring what kind of person and coach which kind of person to be in which arrangement. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for for sharing that. So maybe one of the the keynote topics you have now today as a speaker is also you say maybe related to your story is you change you win. So maybe you can also share a bit about that. Okay, this is one of my pet topic about transformation, uh, setting people free for better transformation. In fact, most people do not transform to the better person because they are carrying out the action not seeing themselves in the new identity. So I give an example. If today I'm an overweight guy wanting to lose weight, so what do I do? If I hire a gym instructor, right, a personal coach, so but assuming that you are my, my gym instructor or my, my personal coach, so you got six pack, imagine you got six pack, you're very hunky, okay? Then I'm the very fat person now, inspired to be you. But I would never become you or never become a healthier me if I only do the action on a daily basis. Example, eat right. Uh, example, leaving weights and stuff and just exercise. I need to first uh, think that I can become like you. So I have to form a new identity of Raymond Lim like Bob. But if I cannot get to the state with clarity and certainty, the actions that I do will always be non-empowering and non-lasting. So it's a mindset arrangement first before your daily action. So most of us are carrying out a daily action without a clear end outcome, like end, end clear in mind of what a new person is. So I call it a new identity. So many at times, if you talk to people who are struggling or having some challenges in their life, the conversation that leads to whether they succeed or not is about how clear they can describe their end identity that they want to become, a timeline an outcome they want to become. If they cannot, they just tell me, oh, every day I'm going to gym, every day I'm going to eat right, everything and stuff. Then I ask them, so who, do you think that you can become like Bob? Uh, well, not easy to become like Bob, right? but I will still continue to eat. So I can tell you, with that conversation, I really know that they will never become slim at all. They will never become healthy at all. Because why? They didn't see themselves as Bob, the new identity. The new Raymond Lee as Bob, as the new identity. So that's why people don't, don't succeed and don't transform to permanent changes. And that is the main reason. Yeah, I like I like that that topic. So, and uh, how how do you how do you come up with that topic? Was it from your own experience? Uh, it's from my own experience and also in my daily coaching arrangement. So, in my first five to ten years of leadership, right, I managed to overcome myself to become a top sales individual. I managed to help some. Some means those people are driven by nature, or those people who have most resources. So, I only get to that maybe 10-20% of success or my team member become successful in my early stage of mentoring and coaching. I find out why, why I cannot get the rest to be able to do well. So only when I understand that if I keep telling them what to do, but without them seeing the new identity, okay, they will never become. So over the last, uh, maybe the last 10 years, plus minus, I've successfully able to transform more than 50% of the people that I mentor because I get them to see themselves in the new person they become first before all the actions come. So most of the alignment, let's say I have three sessions with them, five sessions with them, half or more of the session is about focusing on what they can become before what they do. So this is important because if the topic cannot speak with certainty, the actions will never be carried out permanently and consistently because they will have their challenges on a day-to-day -day basis deterring the action to be continued in a positive manner. Wow, thank you for, for sharing that. And uh, I believe that is uh, from experience leading uh, 100 salespeople, as you said just now. Uh, so it is uh, very, very important indeed. Um, so yeah, I think... Uh, we thank you for, for joining us and sharing a lot of uh, nuggets we got off today. And, and uh, thank you for being so passionate. It's a short amount of time, but we managed to cover a lot of questions and get a lot of uh, nuggets from you. So maybe uh, the next question I have for you is the future, right? So right now you have a, a you have built a, a, a great sales team and now you are speaking uh, across, across Asia. So maybe what are your plans in the future? Um, one of my business plans in the future is to become an influential sales coach, an uh, influential business coach, and also a uh, um, sought-after platform speaker, uh, not only in Singapore and Southeast Asia, it's around the world, but 
but I also wanted to give clarity and certainty to people like me who are married or married with kids to share with them about how they can actually uh, run their businesses and yet have quality time with their family. So over the years, I'm very glad that with the income source and also the passive income and active income I have and also the businesses, I, I work lesser over the years, but I earn more. So actually, many of us do not know that actually there's a secret to earn more with, by working lesser. The only thing is about you yourself having clarity, able to have time management, uh, family management, arrangement and stuff. So I, I let, me, let me test you with an equation. If a salesperson works eight hours a day, okay, five days a week, earns $100,000 sing dollar or $100,000 ringgit in this case a year. If they want to double their income, that means they need to work 16 hours. If they want to triple their income, means they need to work 24 hours. Not possible, right? So you see that most people who want to have a huge transformation in their results need to do the right things right. So most of us are doing things right, but not doing the right things right. There's a huge difference between doing the things right and doing right things right. For example, I always tell my salesperson, you wake up, you check your production, uh, you check your sales result every day. Uh, your results will increase. Uh. Okay, so most of that, the salesperson thought that coming for training, coming for meeting would increase their results. But answer is wrong because they didn't put in the first thing right first. So my desire now is also to also provide more uh, coaching and training to sales individuals who really want to need help. So in fact, Bob, I want to reach out to your viewers. Uh, if any of one want me to speak in your organization or even come for some of my close and open workshops, feel free to reach out to Bob or me. I'll be more than welcome to, to have uh, some session with you. In fact, you want some videos or even some subscribed videos and even I will still be able to provide for you. Uh. In fact, I have a lot of close subscribed video content in my uh, video arrangement. Yeah, thank you, Raymond. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. So I, the, my favorite part of today's interview was, you know, you need to change. You need to see yourself in that in that future first uh, before you can, you know, take action and, and really make that change. So thank you so much, Raymond, for sharing all your wisdom here today. So for the listeners, you can follow Raymond Lim, RLC on, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and also uh, Facebook. And uh, yeah, I, I will also put the links in the description if you're watching this on podcast or YouTube. Raymond, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom here today. Yeah, my pleasure, Bob. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for taking time. Yeah, I appreciate Bob uh, inviting me on this podcast. Yeah, all the best to all of you. All right. Thank you, Raymond.